Ostrich ferns are um, excellent for cool, shady areas. They grow uh, three to five feet tall, and uh, some gardeners consider them invasive because they increase so much each year, just like um, the common roadside orange daylilies. But uh, for me, this is a plus. So today, I'm starting a bed for them behind uh, my garage, right beside my potting bench. I already have a um, bed for them behind the bench under the chocolate vine beside our house. And it's really nice sitting there. And uh, ostrich ferns have their own smell that um, is, is I, I think it's really pleasant. And um, ostrich ferns are easy to move. And uh, right here you can see some that volunteered in my uh, seed bed and I saved them instead of pulling them up. And I'm digging them up and putting them in um, my wheelbarrow that you can't quite see there. And um, once I get these all dug up, I'm going to take them back there and um, put them in the, um, the ground beside uh, my potting bench behind the garage, which is pretty well out of view. But I think that'd be really nice to just have that whole area there filled with um, ferns. I've been uh, busy this year. I put uh, daylilies, the common orange ones, all along the side of the yard there. And then uh, all across the back, I've got various um, things. And then on the other side, I put um, hostas all along the other side because it's really shady there. And the hostas I put there are royal standard and they have a really um, perfumey scent and um, hummingbirds just love them. So I've got a whole row of those on the other side of the yard. Ferns are um, a class of plants that don't make seeds. Um, they make spores on the underside of their leaves, and that's how they reproduce. Here is uh, behind the garage where I'm uh, digging a hole to uh, plant them. And um, it, it's pretty straightforward. You, you just dig a hole bigger than the root ball and um, put it in there at the same ground level that it grew before and take the clods and break them up with your hands and then put them back in there and these weeds i'm pulling up i'm just throwing them out there so we can cut them with the lawnmower and bag them put them on the compost pile Also, it's um, still May, and uh, May becomes uh, one of those months where I might water something if I'm planting it into the sun. And um, But I'm planting it here in pretty cool shade, so I won't need to be watering these ferns in. If um, I was planting something out in the sun in May, I, I would water them. But when I plant, whenever I transplant things in April, I try and get most of my, my transplanting done in April. That way you don't have to water things because the soil is all cool and the sun's not hot. It's that hot sun that uh, makes you have to water things because when you dig things up, you're destroying the root hairs which absorb water for the plant. So that's why you need to water things so well when you transplant them. But... Um, if you do it in April before it warms up, then you, you don't have to do this. So that's why I like trying to get all my uh, transplanting done in April. Throughout the year, I stop and think, you know, where I want, might want to move things to. And then I just kind of save that up mentally. And then uh, when it gets to be April, I do all my transplanting. And um, 
I just had so much to do this year. I'm just now getting to some of it, so. There's the, uh, the first one pretty much in. So I'm going to start digging the hole now for the second one. There's the second one. And, um, yeah, you just put it in at the same level. Make your hole just slightly bigger than the root ball. And then break up the big clumps of dirt and put them in there. Okay, here's, um, just dig up a, a, a nice hole, slightly bigger than the root ball. As you can see, there's a lot of incomeiner growing back here behind the garage. Put it in there, and, um, break up the clumps of dirt and fill it in. Okay, so that's how you move um, ferns. And uh, thanks for watching, and um, I'll talk to you next time.